I'm joined now by Dr. Jonathan Layton talking about ASGE's session on capsule endoscopy and really what some of the challenges are. But let's go over how new technology has really opened up several uses for the capsule. Thank you. Well, you know, it is really exciting uh, technology because uh, until the 2000s, you really couldn't get a good view of the small bowel mucosa. And with the uh, invention of the capsule endoscope, it allows direct visualization of the small bowel mucosa almost for the entire small bowel, and that was incredibly unique. So we were missing a lot of lesions because the only um, modality we had was the barium small bowel follow through. So the capsule endoscope has opened all sorts of uh, doors in terms of exploring the small bowel, really taking advantage of uh, nanotechnology. And so it's uh, been of great use, mainly for small bowel bleeding, uh, because that has been so difficult to visualize over the years. But we're also using the capsule for uh, looking at the esophagus and also the colon. Uh, but I will say its main use is in the small bowel. And when you're there and you're looking for bleeding, it can be for vessels, for abnormal bleeding vessels, or for inflammation, or even Crohn's disease, or small bowel tumors. So it's really been exciting. So there's a lot of great things happening, and I, I know patients are happy about this idea, but there are some challenges, and one of them is not being able to control the speed like yeah. you would with a scope. Yeah, that's an important point because uh, gastroenterologists are used to controlling the endoscope when they go through the stomach or through the colon. When you give someone a, uh, a small bowel capsule, it uh, moves through at its own speed and rate based on uh, peristalsis. And so if you see a lesion, the good news is we can see more lesions with the capsule than we've seen before. The bad news is we don't have a way of controlling its speed. Uh, in addition, because it flips sometimes through the small bowel, it can miss uh, particularly single mass lesions. There is some exciting new work being done in that area, for example, uh, magnetic control of the capsule, so that using external magnets, uh, we may be able to control it better, although that research is mainly being done in the stomach right now. But it's still exciting. But you're right, the biggest challenge is uh, speed. Um, the other uh, risk, uh, safety risk with capsules, while it's relatively low, is that if you give a capsule to somebody with uh, an obstruction or a small bowel stricture, then there is a risk of retention uh, behind that stricture. So we have to be careful about that and screen our patients correctly. Uh, we can use cross-sectional imaging like CAT scans or MRIs or even the patency capsule to make sure that the, uh, uh, the intestine is patent but otherwise that is just one risk that one has to be worried about. However, that retention may actually help you find the diagnosis. Uh, precisely in a subgroup of patients uh, when all other studies are negative and uh, the capsule is retained, it usually is a site of pathology and if warranted then the patient might undergo surgery but have that area of disease uh, resected. Are there any patients that this is contraindicated for? Uh, well, that, you bring up an important uh, point. One of the controversies, the FDA has it contraindicated for patients with pacemakers or other intracardiac devices because of fear of interaction. I can tell you uh, most studies have shown it to be extremely safe in that setting, and there's very uh, little inter interference uh, between the capsule and the pacemaker. Uh, nevertheless, because it's an FDA black box warning, then you know um, it is contraindicated, and probably there won't be any studies to um, reverse that contraindication. Based on studies, though, it's very safe. Um, the other uh, contraindication is a patient with known obstruction or known strictures uh, because of the risk of uh, capsule retention. And then finally, if someone has a swallowing disorder, then you have to be careful about giving the capsule. And so you have to uh, take all of those into account. Despite the challenges though, it sounds like it is a great new tool and very exciting. Very exciting. As I said, a, a great tool for the small bowel where uh, there's uh, more technological advances that are going on in terms of variable frame rate speeds that can speed up when the capsule is going too quickly. 
um, and as I told you about the magnetic control, and then there are capsules that not only can look at the small bowel, but look at the colon, and there is uh, some research being done on what we call a pan and terra capsule that looks at the small bowel and the colon all in one procedure. So a lot of exciting uh, things going on with capsule endoscopy. And we'll continue to advance. Dr. Yes. Layton, thank you so much. You bet, thank you.